Now we go to the fifth point of sure victory. Replace worldly value system with God's value system. Because the value system is our underlying belief. It will affect us. When we have healthy value system from God, then when we look at things, everything will be positive. But when we have negative worldly value system, then we are affected by the world without knowing it. And it's very important to change our value system. And when we believe in Jesus, will our value system t totally change? Yeah. It should, right? Yes. But do we all change our value system? Do we all change our value system after we become a Christian? Before we were Christians, we might value money. Yeah. Do we still value money now? No. We might value people's looking up to us. But do we still value that? Actually, most Christians only change a little bit in the value system. And for instance, the world is just, uh, the value system is success is very important. So when they have failure, they say, oh, it's terrible. I feel like, oh, this time I didn't do so well. Oh, I'm, I'm no use, you know. That way, it's affected by the value system. And each one of us have unhealthy value system, and sometimes we didn't know that. We didn't pay attention. Why did I feel so unhappy? For instance, this value system, things have to be go, has to go right. This is a value system of many people. Things have to, to go right. When things are not right, then I did something wrong, or someone did something wrong, or God doesn't love me. So this value system affects many people, and they think things have to, have to go right. And things don't go right, then I'll get angry or frustrated. And this affects us. Or people should love me. This is a value system system of many people and when people don't love them and then they get angry and they get unhappy now of course it's best that people love you but do people love you all the time no, no. no. <laughs> so when you accept that yes people sometimes they might not love me sometimes they love me if they love me I will treasure that and I will appreciate that but if it, it doesn't happen it's okay it's okay. When people don't say positive things to me, when people don't appreciate me, it's okay. But sometimes we have this underlying value system. For instance, you come up here to lead worship. We might have this underlying value system. Well, at least when I finish, people would smile at me or say something positive and appreciate me. The pastor would say, you did a good job. You know, we expect a little bit of that. If no one says anything, we might feel discouraged. So the underlying value system will rely on people's response, right? But it's something so deep in our heart, so deep in our lives, it's hard to change, right? To say, to believe that God really treasures everything I've done for Him. God appreciates me, it's enough. If anyone appreciates me, it's additional bonus. Amen. Can you say that? Amen. So then you won't be affected by people. And so if we look at our lives, we find that we have many, many uh, unaware, um, negative worldly system. Okay, now we look at this worldly value system. First, self-centered. When people go to church, the first thing they think is not, what can I do for God? How I can worship God? The first thing they think, oh, I will be blessed. Think of it. I mean, it's, it's okay to think about that, but the first thing we we'll, we'll think is, I'll be blessed. I'll be strengthened. It's not wrong. It's not wrong. But it's natural for us. Even when we do good things, we think of what we can get out of it, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they go to church because they have good friends there, right? Mm -hmm. The pastor makes me feel good. 
usually is that reason. But when we have this value system of God, we'll say, God is so good, I want to worship Him. I want to really lift up the name of God. I want to bless the people. Now do all Christians come to church and say, I want to bless everyone I see. Not necessarily think like that. So we are affected by self-centeredness without knowing it. Yes. If you go deep, you find that we find that everything we do, we expect positive responses, positive results. I will get benefit, and we look, you know, look for that benefit, and that's self-centeredness. Since we we're babies, we look for the love of the mother. It's not wrong, it's not wrong at all, but we rely on that. We rely on that self-satisfaction. When you help someone, if the person says, Oh, you're so wonderful, you're a wonderful Christian. Your love to me touches my life. Oh, you're the greatest person I've seen in my life. You feel very good, right? Yeah. If you help the person, the person has no response at all. And say, you, you're nagging me, you, you're too much. And then you say, I'm helping you, well, why do you do that? And then we'll get frustrated, this person I don't want to see anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we look at our own, you know, how people treat us yeah. afterwards. So that's self-centeredness. Have you detected some self-centeredness yeah. in your life? Yeah. I have detected much <laughs> in my life, so I have to I become aware of that. And then I will try to take care of that. And <clears throat> it's possible because when we are self-centered, even when you leave worship, sometimes we we'll say, oh, how are the people responding today? Am I leading well? And if you sing one note off notes, and then you say, oh, it's terrible. When you have that attitude, do you think your worship is totally pleasing to God? No. It, it might not be. But God is gracious. When you ask God to forgive me and please help me, I'm still self-centered, please help me. For instance, as a pastor, when I pray for people and they experience the Holy Spirit and they're touched by the Holy Spirit, I say, thank God, thank God, I feel so good, right? <laughs> but if people don't experience the Holy Spirit, I say, mm, oh, they're not open. Oh, today the anointing is not on me. Oh. That way, I'm still thinking about myself, right? Mm -hmm. So when we find this self-centeredness, we'll say, God, please help me. Please help me to do it for you. Yes. Can you say it? I do it for Amen. you. Amen. I come to church for you. Amen. And when I love you, you bless me. Yes. But I don't look for the blessings all the time. Amen. So when we... When we are aware of that, then your life will be uplifted. When we are aware of this self-centeredness and change it to selflessness and really be crucified with Jesus and say, it doesn't matter if people hurt me. It doesn't matter if I suffer for Jesus. It doesn't matter if people persecute me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when I serve and there's no result. Can we, can we say that? It doesn't matter when I serve and there's no result because God will see what I did for Him. That way, you actually will be more free. When people are self-centered, they are not free. Why? When people are self-centered, they will say, Oh, people don't like me. Oh, my ministry is, is, is powerless. I can do, not do much. I'm useless. I've met many people like that. When they talk, they're always saying, Oh, I'm useless. I cannot do it. Then they're looking at themselves. When they, the more they look at themselves, the more they are hurt. But when we look to God, it doesn't matter. Even if I give one cup of cold water to a little one, God will remember that and reward me. It doesn't matter. If that little one doesn't respond to me, it doesn't matter. I just do it. I just bless people. I smile at people. If they don't smile back, it's okay. <laughs> because when I do that to that person, I'm actually doing it to Jesus, the Lord. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Okay, another worldly system is get rich. Yeah. Uh, at least I have enough, or more than enough, well, at least I can buy a good cell phone. You know, a good one, a big one. Uh, the best one, the fastest one. So that's another value system that 
oh, everyone has a cell phone, but I don't have one. I only have a small one, and only old style cannot get on the internet. It's not good enough. And that, and that will disaffect us. That actually, when you look at all this, you find that most Christians actually, the value system is changed how much? A lot or a little bit. I, I, are our value system changed by God a lot or a little bit only? Only a little bit. So and when we are aware of that and we, we, when we take care of that, then our lives will become much, much better. And then you won't be affected by people. Then you'll be joyful. How to be joyful and powerful in the Lord? Be crucified with Jesus. It doesn't matter. When we don't have this, it doesn't matter. I won't die. <laughs> in the past, I didn't have a cell phone for years, for years. It doesn't matter. Okay? Or be successful. Even when we do godly things. When things don't go right, and then we say, Oh, no result. And you go to a cow if there's no result, and then you say, oh, it's useless. But in God, it's not, right? God will say, even when there is no result, I remember it. I will bless you. But we still like to do well, right? When you come up to lead worship or do something, you want people to be touched by the Holy Spirit. Amen. If people are not touched, you say, oh, I'm not successful. Amen. So even in a church, sometimes when we do ministry, we look at our own success. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you have pressure. That every time you say, to do well this time. Oh, I might not be doing well. Oh, I just have one note off note. Oh, I'm terrible. <laughs> when we look at ourselves, there's more pressure. Why are there so many people who serve that they are burned out? Why are so many people burned out? Because they look at themselves and look at the result, look, at, look for success. Or make people look up to us that we think is so important. When people say, oh, you're wonderful, you're great, and then we're floating in cloud nine. Oh, oh, I'm so wonderful, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we feel very good. But when people don't look at us or in the street, they didn't recognize me. Pastor Yip didn't recognize me. Oh, oh he didn't remember me. How come they didn't remember me? <laughs> when people don't look up to us, and then we'll feel hurt. Let me ask you this question. As a pastor, compared to a lay person, the number of times that we have rejected compared to a lay person, do you think, you know, as a pastor, some people think pastors are welcomed by people, accepted by people, oh, they always are the superstar. <laughs> but let me ask you this question. A pastor compared to a lay person, the number of times that we have rejected, is it more than a lay person or less? More. more. Actually, it's more because we minister to more people, we do more evangelism, we help more people, and the, there are more times that we are rejected because the more we serve, the more we are rejected by people. And that's why sometimes ministers get burned out. And that's why Lay people believing in Jesus and just enjoy, you know, enjoy the church life, they feel very good. But when they start to serve, they feel more pressure because they look for, you know, results, they look for people looking up to them. Uh, that way, they have more pressure. But if a Christian would say, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, I can put it down. Okay? Or, have to get married. This is another <laughs> another value system. And when people are not married, they say, oh, I missed something good in my life. I remember it when I was in Bible college. One time a few schoolmates together we talk and then and then we say, Well, if Jesus comes back soon, what do you like to do? Get married. And one person says I want to get married before Jesus comes back. <laughs> so, to her, that is more important than anything. If I don't get married before Jesus comes back, I miss something good. So, 
for many people, this become a burden. Uh. But if we can say, it's wonderful to be married, it's wonderful to be single. Yeah. I can enjoy single life. But actually, let me tell you, if you don't know how to handle marriage life, getting married can be more painful. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know how to handle marriage life, but if we know how to really treat, actually, how do we have a better marriage life? Is when we treat the pe person well. But most people in marriage is expecting the other person to do well. So they always say, oh, my husband's not nice to me. Oh, he forgets about me. He doesn't communicate with me. It's the complaint of most wives. But when you say, well, he needs my love. I love him. That way, when you love him more, he will love you. Uh, respond sometimes maybe a little bit but the more you love he love you more and more and more but maybe not proportional to your love but it doesn't matter if you look at life like that then you'll be joyful but most wives are not like that mm -hmm. most wives are counting how much the husband doesn't love them and then they get angry okay and then helping people to offer okay I'm Okay, this is N. Helping people or offering to God brings loss. This is another value system. Even of Christians, sometimes say, Oh, yeah. the money staying in my wallet is better, safer. <laughs> if I offer, it flies away. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, all the money in our wallet, it will fly away. Mm -hmm. No matter how much you have, it will fly away. But if you offer to God, with a joyful heart. Mm -hmm. Many Christians will say, okay, I'll pay the minimum amount. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they think that way is the best. Actually, when you offer, do this offering, but you do it in a, you know, unwilling way, actually the value in heaven might be less than the value you offer. But if you offer with a joyful heart, what you offer will become a bigger value. In God's sight, that's more valuable. Do you believe that? Yeah. Yeah. The attitude counts. It's not just the amount, right? So when you say, when I offer to God, God really is happy. When I offer with a joyful heart, God will remember and bless me. Of course, we don't look for the blessings, but we say, I do it joyfully. Then your offering will be double, triple, quadruple, many, many times, right? Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. So next time when you do offering, do it with a smile. Lord Jesus, I want to make you happy. I want to please you. I want to do my best. Even though I, you know, my amount is not that great, but I really want to please you. I try my best and it, with a positive attitude. And sometimes we will think of helping people, oh, spending time, money, to help the person is not worth it. But anything we do actually is worth it. Okay, now God's value system, you can see it in the Bible all the time. It's more blessed to give than to receive. But sometimes we don't think like that. But we think it's more blessed to receive. Then it's very natural for us to say, oh, when people love me, welcome me, I feel very good. I mean, people usually think like that, right? When you go to church, oh, the people are very nice to me here. They always treat me nice. Then we feel happy. But if we change the attitude and say, if I bless many people, that's more blessed. And then God's plan is perfect. God's plan is the best. But some people think my plan is the best. <laughs> now, what I want to plan for my life is what I want to happen. But actually, our plan might not be the best plan. One Christian told me one time, I'm afraid to pray to God to ask Him to guide me. Because she said, I'm afraid God will tell me to go to Africa. And then I will suffer there. So I dare not pray to God to ask me to guide me in my future. Her thinking is, God is like the meanest person in the world. God's plan is the meanest thing, and when you go into God's plan, you suffer and you lose everything. That's her thinking. But actually, in our heart, we should say, God's plan is the best. Amen. God's plan is the highest plan. 
It's the most wonderful plan Amen. and will make my life go to the highest level. Amen. So that's, that's belief, that's very healthy, God's value system. And there it is, God's gift for marriage or singleness is always good. Doesn't matter. I enjoy marriage life. But some people, when they're married, they want to get out. <laughs> when they're single, they want to get in. They cannot enjoy where they are. And actually, enjoy what we have is very important. That's God's value system to accept what God has given us. And then God will take care of those who obey, that He will take care of me. Amen. That I don't have to worry. So this is God's value system. And then it's beneficial to sacrifice for God. Even when I sacrifice for God, when no one sees it, it's okay. Amen. That God knows it. That this actually in the Bible is full of God's value system. To bless people, to love God, to uh, even when no one sees it, I will still bless people and I will trust in God. I will enjoy God. This is another value system. I can enjoy life. Some people have this attitude. Life is difficult. I hope Jesus will come back soon. Then I don't have to suffer anymore. <laughs> Actually, the attitude can be, when I do anything for God, when I, even when I suffer for God, it doesn't matter. God will bless me and I can enjoy life now. Can you say, I can enjoy life now. I can enjoy life now. I can enjoy being me. I can enjoy being me. I'm thankful I'm me. I'm I'm thankful I'm me. Are you thankful you are you? Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, so we'll stop here, but I pray that you examine your life and say which value system is affecting you more. Mm. Is any of this negative worldly value system affecting you? We come to God and repent and be aware. Be aware of this value system that affects us and be aware of how people affect us. And because the more you take care of that, the more you will be free. And the more you will to, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the, the more joyful you'll be and the more anointing you carry. Yes. And the more you can bless people. Many Christians actually have good desire, good intention to be used by God. But they didn't know that they are caught up by all these kind of problems. That all these problems hold them down. They try to serve God, but they find powerless. I try to serve God, but this is only how much I can do. I cannot do anymore because I have no more strength. I, I'm tired. I'm tired. I've done too much. That's the attitude of many Christians. But you say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I can do more and more. But the first is we want to enjoy God more. Relax in Him. That's another value system. I can enjoy life. Relax. Enjoy Him. And then we'll have strength. It's more important to come to God than to serve. First come to God. And then have the relationship and the strength. And then serve God. Don't serve God without the power, the strength from God. It's more important to come to Him to enjoy our daddy in heaven. Let's rise and, and then I'll pray for you. And but at this time, I want you to examine your life and say, how am I affected by other people or by the worldly value system? If you'd like me to lay hand on you, you can come up to the front. And I'd like to pray for everyone. And my intention is that you can enjoy God's presence. Amen. When we can enjoy God's presence, then every time we pray, we can experience His peace and love. Yes. And then you're more motivated. Look at me right now. Every time I pray, and I think about the love of God, I can either experience His joy, His joy will flow out, or His love anytime. It's really a very wonderful gift. Our God is a very diligent God. He Amen. serves us all the time. 24 hours every day, seven Amen. days a week. Forever and ever, never ceasing. Yes. He never ceases to bless us. Even when we go to heaven, He will still bless us. He will, he will not say, let me take a break. I've done enough. 
God never would say that. He's so wonderful. When you can enjoy God, then you say, Oh, it's so wonderful. I can put down my burdens. Hallelujah. I hope this word today will stick in your mind, stay in your mind and apply it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus, please come and bless us. So very often we are tied down by problems. We are tied down by how people treat us. We are tied down by our attitudes, by value, by our value system. Lord Jesus, please clear our heart of all this garbage. Clear our hearts of all this garbage. Free us. Give us freedom and joy and strength that, so that we can enjoy every moment of our life. Amen. If we think of the skill of enjoyment, would you say that from 1 to 10? 10 is that you enjoy God to the greatest extent. You think about where are you? How much are you enjoying God? How much are you enjoying life? Sometimes people say, I enjoy God, but I don't enjoy life. I hope you enjoy God and enjoy life, even when there are difficulties. Let's come to God and repent and ask God to help us and clear our heart of all this garbage and come to Him just like a little child. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus loves me. Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, you're so wonderful, Jesus, it's so wonderful in you, so wonderful, Jesus sets me free. Jesus set me free. Oh, I'm free in Jesus. Oh, relax and let yourself go lighter and lighter. Ah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Put down all expectations, all the worldly value systems, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If things don't go right, it's okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.